Danielle McCartan for Bronx Pinstripes here at the home of the Somerset Patriots TD Bank Ballpark. To my right, Sparky Lyle. He's a three-time All-Star, two-time World Series champion, and the first AL reliever to ever win the Cy Young Award. I'm in great company here. Thank you for taking the, the time out for me today. Oh, my pleasure, my pleasure. Um, so, I mean, we'll start, I guess, with the Red Sox. You were drafted by the Red Sox, um, and it's the most bitter rivalry of all of sports. Oh, yeah. I wasn't drafted though. I, I actually signed with the Baltimore Orioles to start out with, and uh, I guess you would say the Red Sox. I became a Red Sox. Uh, I guess it's Rule 25 now, and uh, so that's actually how I got in the Red Sox organization. And then from there, uh, you know, I I uh, I got a shot at the big leagues because Dennis Bennett, who was their left-handed relief pitcher at that time, was in a terrible car accident. Sorry, Dennis, but, you know, it, it Opportunity helped me, it, it, it yeah. helped me and uh, they gave me two weeks, so that's how all that happened. And then to be to go from the Red Sox to the Yankees, <laughs> yeah. what was that like for you? Well, it, you know, it, it was something that uh, Ralph Houck, who was the manager of the Yankees back uh -huh. then, uh, I, I really uh, pitched good against the Yankees all the time. Mm -hmm. I mean, not that I was trying to pitch crush them any more than anybody else but right. uh, it just turned out that way and uh, so Ralph Hugg has, was trying to get me for the past couple seasons before I actually did make the trade before they did make the trade and uh, so I what I what I remember uh, the beginning of me leaving the Red Sox was Book Powell uh, beat me in a game uh, in, in Fenway, I threw him a slider down the way, and he kind of just reached out. And I don't know if you've ever seen Fenway Park or not, but uh, there's only three feet of foul territory down there. Well, his ball hit right on the chalk line. And uh, Eddie Casco, the manager, uh, told me that I couldn't get left-handers out. So we had a few words, and yeah, yeah. I think that kind of started the, the ball rolling as far as me becoming a whatever god knows i didn't know i was going to become a yankee oh my friends back excuse me <laughs> <laughs> um so and and you know you mentioned the slider ted williams what yeah. taught you the slider i mean he is one of the all-time greats well, it, it, it was just so to me there was uh that was one of the things that happened to me and i consider that a life-changing thing really i mean uh, you know when the Red Sox uh, drafted me in that Rule 25, mm -hmm. all that meant back then was I had to go to spring training with the big club, which is where Ted Williams was. Right. So I, I had pitched that day, struck out 12 in five innings. I was feeling good about myself and uh, mm -hmm. sitting in the clubhouse, and he comes in, and he was very loud. And, and I wanted to know where the left-hander was that pitched that day. Of course, I raised my hand and figured he was accolades were coming yeah, my yeah, way. Yeah. <laughs> well, that wasn't true. <laughs> <laughs> and he said that uh, he said he he could uh, see my thumb sticking up when I was throwing my curveball all the time. So we actually went outside to fix that. And as we were talking outside, I was started throwing the 12 to 6 curveball, so we fixed that. But he told me that the slider was the best pitch in baseball because he couldn't hit it consistently when he knew it was coming. And he really didn't tell me how to throw it, but he told me what it what it did. And the next uh, year or two, I used to lay in the, when I go to bed at night, lay there with the ball in my hand, mm -hmm. trying to figure out how in the heck mm -hmm. I'm going to throw this thing. <laughs> <laughs> Studying some physics. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, finally, it, you know, I got up one night, and I thought I had it, and went outside about 3 o'clock in the morning. I was throwing this thing against the side of a garage, and it was just going straight down. Wow. And actually overnight uh, is when that happened. And the next day, I was in double A. And the next day I went to the ballpark. I was warming up to go in. And I, I said to Bob Montgomery, my catcher, I said, slider. He says, well, you don't have a slider. I says, 24 hours ago I did. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and when I threw that slider, it actually hit him on the top of the foot. He didn't even get leather on. Wow. So I knew I had something oh, yeah. special there. For sure. So Yankees Nation should be grateful <laughs> to Ted Williams for that. For I'm sure. Grateful. <laughs> and uh, you also passed it on to Ron Guidry. Right. Well, that was that was another thing that, you know, was uh, just a wonder. That was a wonderful thing that happened. You know, a, a kid with his talent coming up and 
and actually needing another pitch. And I don't know who the minor league pitching instructor was back then, but he wasn't doing his job. That's that's what we felt. Okay. You know, Ron was trying to throw a slider and a curveball, and that's what you come up with, exactly what he had, a slur, but neither right. one of them were any good. Right. But, uh, <laughs> in fact, Ron and I just talked about this about a week ago. We were at a golf tournament at Forest Gate, and uh, what, how, you know, how it changed his life, too. And, I mean, it was just one of those things that he... You know, he learned that in less than a week, maybe 10 days, I, I don't know. But anyhow, it, it, so, something like that you just don't do. You know, it takes yeah. you a while longer. Yeah. I mean, as soon as he did, he put it right into the game, and it was, to the, you could just tell by the way the hitters uh, were reacting to it that mm-hmm. they weren't real good. They weren't feeling good about it, I can tell you that. So That's good news. So I have, I brought with me my iPad. I wanted to play. You a song here, and I want to know my song. A, a song. Uh, yeah, that, that's better. <laughs> and then a I, song. <laughs> I wanted you to, to tell me what you think. What do you think of when you hear? Mariana Rivera. Well, I mean, I, ne- I actually, actually, I, ne- I, I never actually heard that song. I know that he came into the Sandman. Yeah. But I've actually never heard it. What? No. Well, oh I, I don't. God. I don't get to really see the games that much. And oh my God! That's like, why I didn't know what that was. Well, I got another one for okay. you. <laughs> Mark can attest to this. I'm not. This one here. That's not a good one. <laughs> this was the song. Yeah, you I, to. I know. I know. This I is. Know. Um, Marty Appel. Makes me uh, think of graduation. No kidding. <laughs> I, I, we still don't know where it is. But it, 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 it started to, uh, <laughs> just the way I, you know, a lot of players do things out there that they really don't realize they do. And, and, and I think that was one of the things that happened to me was uh, when I would come in, I guess I would throw the jacket at the bat boy, which I really didn't realize I did, and get out of the car and go to the mound and in a different demeanor. And uh, and I think, you know, and I guess the fans started reacting to that. And uh, But I, I, I mean, I'm still oblivious to all this. You know, I'm just thinking about who I got to face or what situation yeah. I'm in or, or whatever. And then, uh, in fact, I think, uh, Marty Appel could probably back this up better than me. I, I don't know how many times they played that song before I actually knew that it was being played. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and once I did, I asked him to not play that anymore because, you know, wonder if somebody brings their kids to the, or their family to the game and they're playing that song and I come in and get my butt kicked. You know, what are they going to think? Yeah. And, uh, so if you could do it all over again, what song would you pick? None. None. Absolutely none. Because I... I don't particularly like it, you know. I, I, you know, back then we never played songs. You know, the hitters didn't go up there to a song. Yeah. They, I think towards the end maybe they did, but uh, I was fine with just. Uh, I mean, like I say, you're actually oblivious to it anyhow. And, yeah. But I, I noticed just from managing the Somerset Patriots how the, the the players will go up to the booth up there and change their songs if they're not hitting or you know all this stuff and you know when I when I would see that or hear that I'd say you know maybe you just need a little more work in the cage <laughs> <laughs> and they say no no it's no a it's song. a song definitely yeah, a song. yeah it's a song um so as a former closer yourself Mariano Rivera is the all-time saves absolutely leader. what makes him so legendary so oh my god unhittable, he, so he, great well you said it yourself being unhittable and and his postseason saves, and uh, you know, no, he, he he did two things. He, you know, he he was so smooth at throwing the ball that I I know that 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 ball got on the hitters long before they knew it was it was going to be there. And he threw very hard, you know, 95, 96 miles an hour. But the you know the cutter was the biggest thing because. That ball only moved maybe an inch or an inch and a half, but he could throw that thing anywhere he wanted to. Right. And and it had a very late break on it. 
and I forget what old timers day I think it was the last old timers day I was ever at which was quite a while ago uh, and he asked me about my slider and I told him I said what are, are you crazy <laughs> you don't you don't need that slider do you, you want to mess up your uh, cutter no yeah. then don't Le touch it. <laughs> leave things well enough alone yeah. but I, I love watching him pitch on TV and stuff it, it was just I mean he could throw the he, he, even if the hitter guessed right they were still in trouble because if they, it, it, you know, even when you're guessing, you still got a shadow of doubt in your mind, and in that split second when everything's happening, and uh, you know, he had a lot of movement on his fastball too. So, and he was by far the the, the best I've ever seen, believe me. And uh, you know, he, even with two pitches, and and uh, but the thing is that his uh, walk to strikeout ratio is absolutely phenomenal. So, that's where the success is. So um, I spoke to Mickey Rivers not long ago, or the Bronx Zoo crew. You have a book by the same name. Correct. What is like your fondest memory of that Bronx Zoo crew? Oh, it was just uh, it was just how well we got together, and then how well we didn't get together. You know, we we uh, fought our butts off to uh, be in those three straight World Series, 76, 77, 78, and all that time believing that that we could do that and everybody uh, arising to the occasion mm -hmm. laughing having a great time going out and kicking butt and I, I, I think that team was was just uh, regardless of, if you take the whole year and the success we had we'll always and forever always be uh, very very close now you were known as somewhat of a prankster. We know about the butt cakes. We know about the, the toothpaste Vaseline. But what's one of the better ones other than those two? Oh, I, 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 it was just uh, I, when I did things like that. It was, it was I could see things happening, you know, and then you react to it. It's not like I, I walked around waiting for <laughs> stuff to do, you know. As, but, but I. I, I I absolutely loved the uh, when I put the shoe polish on the towel and uh, and, and Rick Sawyer, who was a, a rookie that year, I he when he came out of the shower, he before he went in the shower, he always folded his towel a certain way. And I, I well, why does he do that? You know, I, I just why does he do that? And here the he would always wash his hair at the last thing he did coming out of the shower. So I guess. The water running down his eyes. He couldn't open his eyes, so he just came around the corner with his eyes closed, opened up the towel, like, and just so I put that black shoe polish all over there, and he came out, and everybody, I almost drowned, or Walt Williams almost drowned in, in the whirlpool watching him put shoe polish all over himself. <laughs> Uh, and then the, the best prank pulled against you? Did anybody ever try it, or were you the king? Well, no, 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 I wasn't the king by any means, but uh, Fritz Peterson, uh, who is well known, uh, we were going to the ballpark one day in Minnesota, and, and back then we, you know, if the ballpark was close enough, we'd take a cab, so I was like standing outside waiting for a cab. And Fritz came out of the hotel and says, are you going to the ballpark? And I said, yeah. I said, I'm waiting to get a cab. He says, I got a, I got a car. Just go ahead, get in, I'll be right out. So I get in the car, and then he went in and told this uh, guy that somebody was trying to steal his car. <laughs> and the next thing I know, I was over the hood of the car, oh. and the security guy from the hotel was handcuffing me. Oh. <laughs> well, that was, that was pretty funny. damn good. Oh my God. <laughs> And now when you're here as manager of the Patriots, did you continue all that stuff against the guys uh, in the locker room? I, I, I had to calm down once I got here. And, you know, yeah. I, I, I had some fun, but, uh, you know, it, it, I guess maybe I made too much of a transition, maybe, or whatever, or maybe I actually grew up a little bit. But, <laughs> you know, I I, uh, I didn't do a lot of those things just because I, I, I let the players, that was, that was their, you know, yeah. the clubhouse stuff, and I said, I, I think that I just kind of backed off and let things happen. Yeah, so you were pretty successful here. Uh, you, I think it was five championships yes, in your tenure yeah. as manager. Mm -hmm. I mean, what's the secret? 
And these guys are still rolling. <laughs> I, well, that's what we do here. <laughs> it's the it's the Patriot way. It it, it was just um, I don't know. It, it, I always put a lot of uh, faith in, in the clubhouse and the guys in the clubhouse. And, uh, Mark, as Mark Rusinov could attest to, you met earlier. Uh, there were times when I actually released guys that were actually a better player, but they weren't good in the clubhouse. That has something to do. With it. And, and and I think you know you've probably done enough sports interviews and heard that many many times. Well. It actually, I saw it work here, here a, a lot. How, you know, it's like this team here. They they just don't they don't give up. They just keep on rolling. We don't do anything any different here except, uh, you know, Brett's lost a lot of guys this year. Instead of running out and bringing in a body that's not going to be near as good, you just let that space open. Where do you where do you get that guy that's going to? help you. Where do you get the guy that's actually going to replace that guy? I always felt if I'm going to get somebody new, I'll get, I'm will get. i going to wait until that guy comes along that could have replaced that guy that's hurt or left or whatever. And then you go from there. But uh, I had some great teams too. I really did. I, I, it's, it's fun to sit back and just watch them roll. Yeah, and is that a catalyst? You ever want to go to the major leagues and manage yeah. that? I was way too old, and now I am too old. So. <laughs> Plus, in the major leagues, you got to get fired. Yeah, a lot of turnover. <laughs> in, in, in three three uh, years, you're, you're fired. So I was very happy here, and I'm still happy here. And so, um, the current Yankees. I mean, you look at their the back end of their bullpen: Miller, Patances, Chapman. I mean, when you pitched, when you were the closer, you pitched not just one inning; it was a couple. Yeah, that's right. What do you think about guys like that coming? <laughs> The eighth inning man, the ninth inning. Well, man. I mean that—that's when, when you see that work like that. It's like, hey, you know, now you got a six-inning ball game, so you, right. you know, and and don't think teams don't think that way. You know, hey, this is when the Yankees are good. <laughs> we won't talk about them today, right? No. Okay. <laughs> but back, you know, like Mariano yeah. stuff. I mean, you knew that. If you didn't uh, score some runs by the six, you're, you're not going to score any runs, right. and and it's that's that's just how they do it. It's, it's just like when they started bringing the guys in in the ninth inning. I very seldom did that. Uh, not that I didn't go in in the ninth inning, but there was always runners on base. I very seldom. Ever, the only way you started an inning with nobody on is if you pitched the inning before that. <laughs> but. Uh, I, I think it works out well, and and I think you got more quality pitchers in those roles now, and that's that's what makes it so tough. It's, it's awesome. Now Thurman Munson was was your catcher. Absolutely. What is your fondest memory of him? Well, just uh, just everything about him. I mean, he was he was just uh, a man's man, and uh, I know I, I I had to sign some pitchers uh, and. It, it was for uh, Steiner, and I don't even know if they're out yet. But it was a picture of uh, Thurman and I on the mound. He was kind of tapping me on the cheek like this, and and, uh, and Steiner. They wanted you to write a story with, to go with that picture, and, and what I wrote on there was, and I think this epitomizes Thurman Munson, besides the fact that he. Uh, we were very close, as he was with a lot of guys, but he didn't let a lot of, he didn't want a lot of friends. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I wrote on the picture that Thurman will always be my captain, and that uh, this was a man who led by example and backed it up time after time. Very few people do that. I think when Thurman uh, had a dislocated shoulder and we were in the playoffs against Kansas City, and he told us that I can't throw the ball, but I can hit, so I'm gonna play. Mm -hmm. He says if if somebody tries to steal, he said if that ball is right down the middle, he's just gonna drop it because they can't know that, that he yet. can't throw. Right. But uh, we 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 held, kept that a secret, and I think maybe there was only one stolen base. That's the that's that's all you need to know about. It. Yeah. <laughs> you have a reputation like that, it's. Uh... Yeah. He was a great guy. He, 
he just gave you 110% every time, every pitch. Wonderful guy. Yeah. Great, so I think we can close it out with, I heard you're an Eagles fan. <laughs> so I had some two songs here. Oh, oh all if right. If we could uh, just complete the lyrics on it, and you could. <laughs> I'm not too familiar with it. I'll try. But I have two songs. Take it easy. Take it easy. Don't, mess up. Don't done. let the sound right. Take it easy. Own me. <laughs> Take it to the limits, more like it. Good. Do you have that one on there? I don't. Okay, that's that's quite all right. But but take it easy is. Uh, when, when I play pool downstairs, that's the only music that's allowed to be on. <laughs> so I got every Eagles song. There yeah. is. Even my grandkids know who the Eagles are. Mm -hmm. But uh, Take It to the Limit was probably the one, and uh, of course Hotel California. But, yeah. but the, the very first song that I ever, when I went to the minor leagues, that I thought kind of was me at that time was the House of the Rising Sun by the end. <laughs> but I, I've since grown out of that, so <laughs> so we won't go there. <laughs> All right, let's do Hotel California. Okay. I'll play a little piece. Tell me the rest of the lyrics. Go ahead. Oh, God, I don't know if I can do that. Let's see. Okay. It's easy. things about that song is like this. You can always find it there but you can't ever check out. That says it all right there. You know, they might make it, well, they might not make a comeback now. Uh, you never know. I, I got every freaking song that they ever wrote. <laughs> <laughs> not that I memorized. Or, you know, I probably did memorize them, but I'm old now so I don't remember. I'm sure you still. <laughs> so we're good. Okay, well, Danielle McCartan here with Sparky Lyle at uh, TD Bank Ballpark, home of the Patriots. Thank you for checking, thank you for, uh, for doing this, and, and thanks for watching, guys.